and this is the thing, when they ratify the system, they, they, they sort of key it to the ritual of the pentagram and the ritual of the hexagram. And I'm not saying that's wrong. It's a totally legitimate way to work the system. It's just, just not inherent in the system. Uh, initially, what's happening is really Dee's just like sitting down and praying and praying and praying. And Kelly's seeing the embers. They don't necessarily have to make those gestures. Whether those are more or less effective is something that I would suggest that people explore on their own. And, they may be more effective for some people and less effective for others, and just, again, success is your group. Um, the other question, the other thing that I really want to get into is the terms of the keys themselves. And we can differentiate here. When the Golden Dawn sort of gave their version of the Enochian keys, they wanted to make sure everyone vibrated every single letter. Which, does, which is supposed to be how you call the angels from the tablets, because it's square by square, letter by letter. That's not how you're supposed to do the keys. Um, you're actually kind of supposed to say them the way that they're laid down. Um, and one thing that I think that bears questioning is, why are they called keys? Like, there's a reason that they're even called keys. Sometimes uh, th that gets rephrased as calls, but that's not accurate. Um, the reason that they're called keys is because, in as the, as it's given down, there's 50 gates of understanding. There's sort of 50 doors to open to get to where we're going. And the whole question, the reason that the apocalypse is at the end of this, is because it's where we're going. From Genesis to apocalypse, the Bible is a metaphor. It's not meant to be taken literally in any way, shape, or form. But that's the whole concept is start to finish. So these are how we open these gates. Um, and, and this is why the system gets used as a source of initiation. I mean, Alistair Crowley, well, first of all, when he finished his Golden Dawn work was when he had his HGA experience, which was, and if you get to that stage in the Golden Dawn, that's when they kind of like let you into an okay magic. I'm sure he had knowledge of it before, that's not even a question, but um, that's officially in terms of the stages of initiation that he was going through where that happens. And the same was when he wanted to cross the abyss and bring himself into a grade higher than, because, I mean, you know, he started the AA, so there was no way for anyone to initiate him into a higher grade. The system that he wanted to use to initiate himself further was the Enochian system, so that's when he went out and did the calls of the Aethers, and actually, like, that was the force that brought him across the abyss initially. And this is sort of the power the system has. If you think of any... It doesn't matter what occult group we're talking about or what sort of framework we're dealing with. The concept is going from the beginning to end and initiating something from start to finish, which, I don't know if I can emphasize this correctly, any kind of project that's being done, essentially, like that's the purpose of the Enochian system, is a start to finish kind of thing, which is why the metaphor goes from Genesis to Apocalypse. According to the angels, Enochian is actually the first language precipitating the Hebrew language um, and sort of causing the Hebrew language, which they say is like the original human language, basically. Um, and the language itself is interesting, but like the, we see a very clear start to finish in the way that the language is being used in terms of the magical system. Um, and the way Enochian is dealt with itself is kind of interesting. I mean, there's a guy, uh, Donald Laycock, who has his Dictionary of Minokian Magic, which is a useful thing for people to have or whatever, but his introduction to it is kind of horrible because he's just like, oh, this is all made-up bullshit, basically, whatever. And it's just like, well, okay, fine, but it doesn't have... The thing is that if you actually look at the book, there's points where Dee is saying things like, so what's the, how does the etymology work here? How do these words relate to each other? And the angels are just like, no, they don't. It doesn't work like that. Uh, so, I mean, that's, Dee's not really satisfied with that answer, but I mean, that's their answer. So if your debate is that it's not real because there's no etymology, well, they kind of explain, they don't really explain why that's the case, but they say outright that's not the case. Um, there's no sort of sense of like time or context, which is interesting in and of itself in terms of structure of a language, which makes it different from other languages. Um, which again makes sense because the angels say at one point in the uh, in true and faithful relation, there's nothing of us to do with time. Like they, 
Like they, they're really specific about that. Like we are outside of time, so their language doesn't have time and context. Well, that makes sense. It's sort of coherent, at least with what's being said. Um, yes. So basically, if when people want to practically work the system, they kind of either you got you got a couple you got basically three choices, or sorry, four choices. You can work at the Golden Dawn way, which basically limits you to the Watchtowers and the Aethers, and that's fine. You can get results by doing that, and it, and it's very clear. It's like the and there's an open source order of the Golden Dawn. You can look this shit up on the internet in 20 seconds. Um, or they can work it the way that sort of Jeffrey James describes, which is more traditional in terms of the John D. sort of, we're going to sit down, we're going to do some prayers, and we're going to see what we're going to see, or whatever. And there's sort of like a spin-off to that that uh, Skinner and Rankin did, uh, which they claimed was their one true book that was exactly from John D. And it's just basically the question of, do you actually want to just like read these things out of a book, or it's not really that hard to act, to like just come up with the names and come up with a prayer or whatever. Sometimes, though, it, it can be just easier to like pick up a book and whatever. I like the Jeffrey James book. I like the way it goes. So I, I, I use that for me. Um, so that's the other way to do it. And then the third thing would be to come up with something completely new, which is completely valid. Um, this is one of the things where, you know, I always tell people when they're doing ceremonial magic, you should do the rituals the way they're laid down. You know, don't just make up your own crap. But this is one of the places where kind of you can make up your own crap. I mean, you've got the names; those have to be vibrated specifically. You've got the keys; those have to be said specifically. But other than that, you know, the ritual's kind of open. And it's like what gets a result is what's good, and what doesn't isn't. Basically, it's very straightforward in that respect. So it is one of the things that because there, there is no right way to do it as there is with so many other things, and so many other things in ceremonial magic, which is also what makes it the most complicated, because it makes it a lot of work. Um, although I would, I will say just as a sub-note, like, I would recommend strongly that people, like, use the Aethers in other magical work as well, incorporate the keys in other magical work as well. Like, when Crowley did his edition of the Goetia, he included the first two Nokian keys, or, well, I don't know if they were written in his notes, or he actually published them. But, um, yeah, like, to him, like, he was like, yeah, I'll do the first two keys when, when I'm working the Goetia. Because they're cool, and they do magical stuff, and whatever. Like, there's no necessary correspondence between Goetic spirits and Tenokian magic, but he's not the first person to come up with that. Um, when Skinner and Rankin did their version of the Goetia, they did the Goetia of Dr. Rudd. It was a pro prolific and intelligent magician who came up with a lot of correspondences to these things, a lot of really formalized, well, it's not clear whether he formalized the way to work the Boeotia or he was cut getting it from somewhere else, because records of all this stuff, you know, Europe loves to burn books, so we have no idea, like, where a lot of the originals of these came from. Um, but yeah, I mean, he, he included poetic uh, demons in, in Pinocchio stuff as well. But uh, essentially what it does a lot of the time is it just lays down a magical sort of environment. I mean, the first two Enochian keys, essentially for the Black Cross, which are the, the, the Enochian names which unify all four tablets. So pretty much in terms of waking up the universe to anything, the first two keys are, are useful. And then the keys that come after are to activate the, the four tablets as tablets themselves. Um, which the Golden Dawn associate with four elements, which is, I agree with, but you know, you can debate if you have a problem with that, whatever, it's, it's, it's a questionable thing. Um, and then after that, each key essentially activates one of the four quadrants of the four tablets. So, whatever you're trying to do, if you have a purpose, if the idea of the system, as I've been trying to emphasize, is taking something from start.